So what I'm doing is, all right, my, my, I've got two approaches to teaching Blender. My main goal is going from After Effects to Blender. And then my second goal is putting a little bit of the vegetables up front and then dessert afterward. So a little bit of the boring stuff and then applying it in a fun way. So, okay, that's why I'm all over the board with my teaching. Because if I just sat here and talked about topology and quads for three hours, your eyes would glaze over. You know what I mean? So I'm giving a little bit of everything just to keep you all engaged and awake. We're going to start off with the cube tonight. To duplicate an object in Blender, it's Shift D. Okay? And I'm going to twirl down in my outliner here and show everybody something. So this is my object, and this is my mesh data. Okay? Object, mesh data. When I duplicated the object, it made new mesh data, okay? New object, new mesh data. Everyone got that? I don't know the quick command on a Mac. I tried it last time and I couldn't do it. So I'm going to right click. And this time I'm gonna choose duplicate linked on a PC. That's Alt D on a Mac. It might be Option D, I'm not sure. So duplicate linked, I'm just gonna put it over here. Okay. Now look what happened. When I made a duplicate, it gave me a new object and new mesh data. When I made a linked instance, I got a new object, but the original data. Okay. Here's what that means. If I rotate that, nothing's going to happen. But watch what happens if I scale it, nothing's going to happen. Okay, fine. I'll go to tab to edit mode. I'll grab a vertice and grab. Now look what happens. Everybody see that? Here's what this means. When I edit my mesh in edit mode, all instances of it change with it. Okay, but if I've got a duplicate, I'll tab out of that. I can do whatever I want to the duplicate and it will not affect the others, because this is its own mesh data. Can everyone see the difference between a duplicate and an instance? Duplicates have their own mesh data. Instances do not. Okay. I'm going to scale this up a little. The instance did not scale, because like I said, it's only going to go off of the mesh data, not the object data. All right. So if I tab into this into edit mode, hit A to select all, and then I rotate it, now it's changing because I'm in edit mode, editing the mesh data. Everyone got that? Okay. Sometimes you can get away with duplicate. Other times you'll want an instance. Here's why. Since the instance is a direct copy of the mesh data, they share the same mesh data, you're not eating up your processor. So like if you want to make puffy tree branches off in the distance, like, you know, Studio Ghibli trees, you would use instances of one puffy shape object because it's not adding extra geometry to your scene and it won't slow down your render. Do you understand? So for some simple things, instances will save you a lot of time and rendering. So I'm going to select these and get rid of them with X. Oh, okay. It is in mesh. All right. So shift a under mesh. I'm going to choose monkey. It's also called Suzanne. It's just the name for it. Shift A, mesh, then monkey. Yep. It's also called Suzanne. See over here, it says Suzanne. All right. I'm going to use my tilde key to get my view pie, real, pie menu. And I'm going to try front view. Okay. The tilde key. See it right here below the escape key? Yeah. So tilde, front view. And you should see the front view of the monkey. Okay. I'm going to select the monkey. Hit tab to go to edit mode. I'm going to click and drag to box select the vertices. I'm going to press G and drag them to the side. And look what happens. Okay. Hit undo. Everyone ready for this? All right. So watch the screen. I'm going to rotate with my middle mouse. See all the vertices I missed? 
The ones I selected are orange. The ones I did not get are black. Can everyone see the difference? Okay. I'm going to go back to my front view. Everybody hear my voice when I say this. In Blender, you select what you can see. Okay? Here's what that means. We could only see the front of this monkey. All right? Everyone got that so far? Right here, this little box, toggle X-ray. If I click that on, look what happens. We're in wireframe mode, and we can see the back vertices. Like, if I select here, that's a front one. But I could click right around back here and see I got one in the back. Okay? So, again, in edit mode, I clicked this right here next to wireframe. That's X-ray mode. Okay? So with X-ray mode on, I'm going to box select again, and look what happens when I camera spin around. I got every vertice. Okay? You only select what you can see. So if you need to get both sides of a shape, you want to be in X-ray mode. Okay? So I'm going to turn off X-ray mode, and if I select my vertices and G to grab. See what happens? Because we did not get all our vertices. Because we were not in X-ray mode. It's only the vertices that can be seen. So if I click on X-ray mode, it's going to leave shaded. Now we're in wireframe. Yeah, it's right there next to the globe. Now when you box select and you grab, you've got all your vertices. And you could spin around and be like, yep, I got them all. I'm Ash Ketchum. Mm -hmm. Does everyone get that joke? Okay. All right, good. I didn't know if I was dating myself. I'm going to delete the monkey. Shift A, mesh, and we're going to add another cube. Okie doke. Here we go for the next light bulb moment. We're going to tab into edit mode. Now remember, one selects your vertices, two selects edges, three selects faces. Okay. I'm going to click to deselect, and I want one for vertices. I'm going to hold down shift and get my top four vertices, like such. Okay? Let me know when you've got your top four vertices. Everyone got their top four vertices selected? Okay, now, last class, we learned control B is bevel. When you're, excuse me, right. so last class, control B was bevel. Then if I hit the V key, because I'm in vertice mode, we can click and drag and look what happens when you bevel vertices instead of edges. Okay, and again, you could mouse wheel up to give yourself extra segments, should you need it. You just have to be careful because when you do that, if you add too many segments, you're going to start getting vertice overlap and you don't want that. Really? Hmm. I was the only one who was able to do this. Wait, let's try doing it a different way. So I'm going to undo, undo. Okay, here I am at my cube. Because this way you get to see another way of doing it. All right, I'm going to control B to bevel. And let me start dragging. And I'm going to release my mouse. Down here, my review panel. I can change it to vertices. And then in the review, I could edit the width and the number of segments. Is everyone able to do that? I could also edit the shape. Nope. No, I'm just kidding. So what I did, I'll hit undo. I had my four vertices on the top selected. Control B or Command B, whatever it is on a Mac. And I just dragged it a little bit. And then I left clicked on my mouse. Down here at the bottom, Left corner is your review panel. And here you can go from bevel edges to vertices. You can change the width, the shape of it, as well as the number of segments. So now you know how to bevel vertices as well as edges. And this time we're going to stay in edit mode. I'm back to my normal cube. I did undo. All right. Up here, you see a little butterfly. Can everyone see the little butterfly? This is symmetrize, okay? It is not mirror modifying. 
there is a difference. I'll show you the difference. Click on the X. Okay. So yeah, click on the X next to the butterfly. Okay. And choose the top vertice near you. We're going to press G to grab and look what happens. The one across from it moved. Did you click on the X? Did you grab one vertice and drag it? Symmetrize does not duplicate everything. Like that bevel you were talking about, that didn't work. That's not going to work. Watch what's going to happen here in the front. Um, I'm going to press 2 to get my edge. Okay. If I do E extrude, it's not extruding out the back. Everyone see that? Symmetrize can only do a few things. It cannot do everything. Okay. So I'm going to undo all of those changes. And I'm going to click off the X for my symmetrize. When you want to change your shape, when you want to edit your geometry and work non-destructively when possible, modifiers can help. Okay. So I'm going to tab into object mode. So I'm in object mode. I hit tab to get there. And I'm going to click on this blue wrench over here. So when I click on the blue wrench, it brings up the modifiers property. And you got a drop down. And there is a lot of modifiers. We're going to go to the butterfly right here near the top middle and click on mirror. Okay, let's tab into, no, no, yeah, yeah, tab into edit mode. Uh, number two for your edge select. And we'll grab like the top edge. E to extrude. And look what's happening. It extruded out the other side. I'm going to press one to grab a vertice. I'm going to grab that bottom one. I'm just going to drag it. And it did that. It will mirror everything you do to your geometry. Try and have your geometry centered when you're doing it. And clipping, clicking that on will help things snap together when you're editing. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to get rid of this side of the geometry. And I'm going to grab this vertice. And look, as I get more towards the center point, it's snapping it together. So I'm going to do the same thing again. And it's snapped together because we turned on clipping. Okay. Clipping is very helpful when you're trying to do symmetrical editing. Most people model with mirror on. So you're only modeling one side of your object. And the other one comes along with it. You know what I mean? And then when you're done, then you can apply sim uh, mirror. So to apply a modifier, there's a little drop down right next to the camera. So the first one will hide it in the viewport. The second one will hide the entire modifier. This one will not render the modifier. And the little drop down, that's where you can apply the mirror modifier. Let me turn the vertices back on. I had that one off. So with all of them on, now I should be able to apply it. Oh, let's tab out of edit mode. Oops. And then we'll try it. Yep, I can apply it in object mode. Because modifiers are usually applied in object mode and then fine-tuned in edit mode. All right, so we'll hit X to delete. Shift A to add another cube. I'm going to tab into edit mode. When you're in edit mode, if you right-click on your uh, geometry, subdivide pops up. I'm going to click on that. And here in the review panel, you can change the number of subdivisions. Okay. Tab into edit mode. Right click on your geometry and choose subdivide. And I'm going to click off of it. Subdivide is also in your modifier stack. Should you choose to go to their subdivision surface. Okay. I'm going to tab out of this. I'm going to right click in edit mode. I mean, in object mode, shade smooth. And what I want you to notice with all this geometry we've got, it's starting to get like a bar of soap. Okay. Like the one thing we did last week, we learned click the, your uh, mesh thing over here in the panel for properties, twirl down normals, click auto smooth and that fixes some of it. But when you subdivide things, it's going to round them off a lot and you're going to start losing some of those hard edges. If you want to learn more about 
hard surface modeling, you know, just type in hard surface modeling into YouTube. But roughly in a nutshell, um, I'm going to grab this top one. Uh, I'm in edit mode. I'm going to do two for my edge. I'm holding down alt or option. And it's not doing the whole edge loop because of this modifier. I mean the subdivision. So I'm just going to select it all. Remember when I said last week, when you you're trying to go from rounded geometry to straight geometry, it's a little tricky. So I'm just going to do an inset. I'm going to press I. Nope. Okay. That's not doing it. So I'll do E for extrude and I'll scale inwards. That's going to do it. So E for extrude scale inwards, go tab out of that. See now I've got a harder edge here than the other surfaces because that helped retain some of that when it got rounded from by the subdivision. Okay. I'm going to delete that cube. I'm going to put in the monkey this time. So mesh monkey. Look at it from the front, right click shade smooth. And you can see this is very, very rounded. Okay. So I'm going to tab into edit mode and let's try two for edge. Let's get this. No, let's do. I'm going to click off x-ray. That's going to help me immeasurably. I just want this top brow line. So I'm not holding down alt or option to get the whole loop. I'm just getting a few of them to demonstrate this. Okay, so I only got a couple of vertices in the front. I'm going to right click. And I'm going to choose mark sharp. Okay. I chose some edges and I right clicked in edit mode, mark sharp. All right. Now I'm going to go and you see, look, they're a different color because I marked them sharp. Everyone see that? I'm going to tab out of edit mode and look what happened. The brow line is more pronounced. Good evening. And it's not as rounded as the rest of the geometry. So that's another way of bringing back some sharpness to edges that got too rounded. So we talked about bevel and we talked about beveling vertices. There is a bev bevel shader node. So let's do something destructive. Uh, I'll do shift a for a cube. And then I'm going to do shift a for a cylinder. And I'm going to rotate this cylinder R. Let's try Y 90. Nope, that's not it. Let's try R X 90. That's it. And I'm going to bring it forwards a little bit. So that's G Y. And I'm going to scale it down a little bit. Okay, I'm happy with this. Can everybody see this? I've got my square and then the second object, the cylinder is not going all the way through it, all right? So I'm going to shift D duplicate both of these and put them over here for later, all right? Cause that's gonna be another talk. The bull tool, let's make sure it's still loaded up. We're gonna go edit preferences. I had to turn back on my 3D navigation. Let's try bull. Bull tool is still on, everyone got that? Clicked on. And then Node Wrangler. Make sure Node Wrangler is turned on as well. And when after you do that, you should hit save and load, you know, when you're done your add-ons. Okay. So for this first one, I'm going to select the cylinder. When you're doing the bull tool, what you're cutting with is always selected first. What you're cutting into is selected second. Everyone got that? So I select the cylinder, which is cutting, hold down shift, select the cube, which is being cut into, control shift B to bring up the bull tool, 
and I'm going to choose brush Boolean difference. And we should have it cut through. Did everyone have that? Select the shape that's cutting first. Then you hold down shift and select the shape that's being cut into. Control shift B on a Mac. It might be command shift B. Or try command shift B if it, that's not working. And then we'll go to brush Boolean difference. And it should punch through it. Did that work? Now you'll see I clicked on my wrench in the modifier tab. If I grab that cube, not the cube, the cylinder, if I grab the cylinder that we used to cut, I could move it around and look, it's going to cut through wherever we place it. Okay? Because we did not apply the modifier yet. When we apply the modifier, then we'll have this geometry we just created. So I'm going to select my cube, go to the little drop down, apply it. Now, if I tab into edit mode, we have our geometry. Everyone see that? I did Alt to get an edge selection and then Shift to get the rest of the edge selection. And I want to show you all something when you're ready. If I do Control B to bevel this, add some loops, we might run into some issues with let me hit tab out of there with bad geometry. Okay. It's getting a little goofy. Can everyone see that? So I'm going to undo that. Get rid of that bevel. Sometimes beveling goes pretty well. Sometimes it doesn't. All right. So I'm going to show you the bevel node in the shader. Okay. So this is going to be the first node we're learning. Okay. So I just tabbed back to object mode and I'm going to click over here on my rendered view. And I'm going to add a light to the scene by going shift a light. And I'm going to choose sun. So shift a light sun. Now with the sun, what matters most is rotation. And that's this little yellow ball here. So I'm going to bring it around to about here so we can see the front better. Like right there. Okay. That's going to show off this nicely. Any questions on adding a sunlight? We're rotating it by dragging this yellow ball around. I told you you can always go to these drop down menus at the top left of a panel and change what's inside that panel. So it's like up here you got your orbs. Wireframe's going to show you wireframe. This is solid mode. This one right here, if you apply a material, it'll show you the material. And the last one is what it's going to look like when you render it. So it's like the most accurate. It's going to show you the material and everything. So right down here at the timeline, if you need to drag it, you can click and drag if you need to. But this little top thing, we're going to change it from timeline to shader editor right here. Shader editor. Now, this is a side panel. We do not need it. So I'm going to hit the N key to hide it. Now, we've got no material selected. So I'm going to click on my cube. And I can hit new right here or do it from my materials here. And if you have trouble seeing your full panel, you can scroll up or down to do it. But I've got my cube selected. I'm going to hit the new button. And you can mouse wheel in or out to get a different view. You could also select a node and hit G to grab to move it. All of that will work. Just like in the viewport, Shift A will add. So down here, if I do Shift A, I can add a node, click on the word search. And I'm going to choose bevel. And I'm going to get a bevel node. The reason this wasn't working. I had nothing feeding into the bevel. So if you do shift A and you add texture coordinate, and then I'll explain the node chain. Everyone want me to start from scratch with this? Okay. So are you here? Okay. I'm going to do shift A, click on the word search, and type in bevel. 
okay? And I'm just going to pan through here to get closer to the bottom. This is where I want to be. I'm going to add one more node, shift A, click on the word search, and type in coord. And texture coordinate is what I want. So I'm going to click on that and just put it right over there. I need to connect these nodes because, as you can see here, these are already connected. All right. General rule of thumb for most nodes, it's color to color. Green can go into green. OK. And these are purple. So I'm going to go my texture coordinate saying generated. Usually try generated first. And I'm going to go normal to normal. And that worked. Well, look what it did. It beveled this. It beveled the shader without adding geometry. So I can decrease the samples or increase them. Or let's change the radius. So it's just another way to add a bevel with when you've got some geometry changes. I'll undo those. Makes sense. I'm just showing you that. Plus, it's an introduction to the node tree. So you got to make sure normally my first node when I'm doing something is texture coordinated and then I can plug into whatever I want from inside that node tree. I'm going to go to um, the duplicate I made. I'm just rotating my view. This is a cylinder and a cube. OK, the first one we did bevel Boolean. We did Boolean brush difference. OK, to punch into it. And for this, you know what? I'm just going to select them both and rotate them. Uh, R, X, let's try 270. That was it. Now it's pointing up. I had to go 90, 90, 90, so, you know. Does everyone have their cylinder and the cube with the cylinder pointing upwards? If you've got multiple shapes and they're supposed to be joined together, this is what you have to do. So pretend this is part of like a joystick and it has to be the same piece of plastic. Everyone got that? I'm going to select the cylinder first. Hold down shift and select the cube second. I'm still in object mode. And again, I'm going to command shift B. But instead, this time I'm going to try auto Boolean union. So if I tab to view my edit mode, it should all be one object. Let me hit undo and see that again. Let's find out. Yeah, that, that did it. Because see how it's two objects here? Now it's one. OK, that did it. I've now created one object out of it, and they're joined together. So if I wanted, I could add a bevel modifier to this. I'm going to place a cube. I'm going to go back to my modifier tab. And this time I'm going to add an array modifier. Oh, that's why. Look, I wasn't seeing the full screen. OK, well, there's bevel. There's array. So I just wasn't going up high enough. OK. I'm going to choose array. Array, you can change the number of copies and their distance. You can also step them out like that. So if I was making a flight of stairs, I would just change these until they lined up where I wanted. Let's do side view. Yeah, see, now I've got a flight of stairs. Quick and easy. Oh. See, there's my stairs. So you can use the array modifier for like columns that are spaced out evenly for creating stairs, roofing, floors. Got it. Model one thing array, spread it out like a repeater. I'm going to delete that cube. Yes. And if you need them to stay there, you just apply the array modifier after you got them where you want them. Okay. Let's see something cool. 
watch this. You can use the array modifier combined with a curve modifier, and I'll show you this. So I cleared out my scene. I'm going to add another cube, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a tank tread. So I want it to be thinner. So I'm going to do S, Z to scale it on the Z. And let's make it a little wider. So I'll go S, X to scale it on the X. And lastly, I'll do tab into edit mode. Let's try control B and beveled a little bit. We don't want too many segments. I don't want a lot of geometry. Just a little bit of a bevel. Let's say that for the fun of it. So this is my basic tank tread. So I want to have something similar. I'm going to make it a little thicker. So I'm going to go S, Z. Just make it a little thicker. All right. This is new territory. So everyone ready? I'm going to go Shift A. Curve. And I'm going to choose Circle. And I'm going to try RX90. And I'll try RY90. Let's see, which way is that supposed to be? No, let's hit on two. Let's try RZ90. And then RX90. There's our curve right there. Okay, so I, I'm just scaling it up and I can see what's happening here. So let's try RX90. Okay, that did that. That's what I want. I want it to be like this. Can everyone see that? Going in that direction. So now I'm going to scale down on the Z to squash it a little bit and then scale out on the Y, looking at my gizmo, to get it towards where the tread is. Okay, good. And I'm going to just line this up right there. So that's what I've got. I've got my circle above the ground plane. Let me just do GZ, move it down a little bit to the bottom of the tread. And my tread is intersecting it. Was everyone able to do that? Or you can make your curve go in any direction you want, really. You know, I'm just doing this for this example. I'm going to click on the tread. In my modifier, I'm going to add an array modifier. All right. And then I'm also going to click on add modifier again. And this time I'm going to add a curve. It's under deform up at the top. Everyone see that? Yes. All right. So the curve and the array are both on the tank tread. So what I'm going to do is under curve. I'm going to click on my eyedropper and then click on my Bezier curve up here in my outliner. Then under my array, I can start. So let's try G. Let me move this. There we go. That's a little better. Let's do bit curve. Okay. I just got to get this rotated right. The bevel to the, the what? Oh, so when I had my cube right here, I went to edit mode and then control B and then dragged. And I did not use a lot of segments. So I mouse wheeled down until I had fewer segments. And that's how I got my uh, bevel. Okay. And I'm starting to realize what I did wrong here. So my original cube, I did not apply my scale and rotation. So I'm going to go control A 
all transforms. Then we'll click on my curve, control A, all transforms. That's what we needed. I totally forgot to apply my transforms. And I told you, you're going to run into issues. So let's try fixed count. And let's set this to zero. Set that to zero. <laughs> I'm getting some crazy stuff happening here. Let's try. There we go. And then now when I move my tread, it's also the distance it is from the curve. It's funny how much bigger my tread got. But that's just late night <laughs> trying to troubleshoot after a full day of work. You see how you can get it to follow that. You can use a combination of array and curves to make like chains, jewelry, you know, things like that. You just pick the shape you want it to follow and away you go. All right. You can create your 3D shapes here and then export the OBJ file to um, 3D print. So I think you need 3D printing software, but other than that, oh wait, I was in edit mode. That's why things were going south. All right, well, you know, like I said, long day. Chalk it up to that. All right. So I should have been in object mode when I was adjusting that. Like I said, I was just, I was showing you how to bevel and that's when, you know, I didn't go back to it. So that's why that went south, that's funny. So do your modifiers in object mode. All right, I'm gonna do shift A. Add a plane. All right, this is the last thing I'm covering. Okay, so new that we haven't covered is overlays up here at the top. Right there next to X-ray view. And if you click on face orientation, I wanna show you this. Blue is outward facing and red is inward facing. Okay, can everyone see that? That's outward, that's inward, all right? When you're doing your geometry, you want outward facing on the outside, okay? Watch what's gonna happen here. I'm gonna tab into edit mode. I'm gonna extrude like that. Okay, fine. That worked. So let's try tab out. All right, so I'm going to do shift a circle. Where'd my circle go? Oh, it's okay. So I'm going to, let's try five for the segments. Or vertices, whatever. And then we'll move it. There we go. I'm going to tab into edit mode, extrude this up. And that's working. All right, fine. That's weird. Let me hit F for fill. All right. That's weird. All right. When you're modeling, this is luck. This all happened to work out fine. But let me just tab into edit mode. I'm still in edit mode. Okay. I'll select this face. Uh, Alt N. This pulled up normals. I'm going to flip this. This would be an example of bad normals. Red on the outside blue on the inside. So if you run into that, Alt N, you could also try recalculate and it fixed it for me. So that's a way of fixing some bad geometry because if you've got bad normals, that shading will look horrible. Let me show you what that's gonna look like one second. So select that face, Alt N, I'll flip it, tab out. Let me hide my face orientation.
Yeah. So look what happens when I go to shade smooth. That looks terrible. So I'll tab back in. Alt N. Oops. Recalculate. Tab out. And now the bad shading has gone. Bad normals will cause bad shading. All right, that's it for tonight. Now that's working better. Okay. So again, control A, apply or bad things will happen.